This acrylic painting tutorial is super quick, super easy, and it's adorably small. I'm using leftover paint to create a textured background, which I then paint a simple heart on top of. This is a great thing to do with leftover paint if you want to make a valentine and just a fun way to play around with texture and mixing color directly on your paper. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. I'm starting with a really cute sized piece of paper. This is going to be a Valentine and I'm using two different brushes. The first one is a flat brush, which I'll be using for my background. As you can see, this paint palette is very used. So I'm actually using a palette that I taught a cactus still life artwork with. So I have a lot of colors on there and my plan for the background is just to have fun experimenting blending color directly onto my paper. I'm gonna play around with how thick and thin I'm painting, and I'm gonna start with black and white to focus on mostly a gray color scheme. I really like how overlapping with my flat brush creates like almost a weave looking pattern. And for now, I'm just keeping things black and white. If you're interested in creating a gradient or an ombre effect in your background, check out the link above for my cactus tutorial, which starts out with a very smooth blend. My goal with this is not a smooth blend. One thing I wanna point out is I'm using a flat brush so I can have big flat spaces. So as I'm painting, I am not changing the shape of the bristles. Sometimes when my students think texture, they think, oh, let me like press my brush into the paper and twist it around. The brush itself should never change too far from the actual shape that it's in. So you're creating texture on your paper without destroying the bristles of your brush. Your brush should always have a good hair day. I love working wet on wet because you can just layer your paint and create depth without having to clean your brush each time. So I'm not even cleaning my brush as I dip into my black and white because I have such a small amount on my palette that, and because I'm just using those colors, it won't mess anything up too much. Now I'm dipping my brush in some leftover blue, which I use in my cactus painting I've completed, and adding it on top is going to create a really beautiful grayish blue. If you overlap over white, it's gonna make your color lighter, and if you overlap over black, it's gonna make it darker. So whatever color scheme you decide to use, remember, the colors, if you mix them together, are gonna to change. So if your color is really dark, think about what color you're gonna add on top of that. And my advice is to keep things pretty simple. I'm gonna stick with my black, white, and blue. Although, do you see that yellow that mixed in there? It turned green because there's yellow and green mixed on my palette. My palette is a hot mess, as you can see. So this is a really great thing to do if you finish something early. As a teacher, the question, what do I do when I'm finished, is always looming in the back of my head when teaching something. So this is a great way to use up paint that you didn't use for a larger project. Again, this is a really small, quick um, practice. I mean, I'm using it as a Valentine. So this is just card making, practicing texture with my acrylic paint, and I'm really enjoying the process. So you can see my paper keeps moving. Adding tape before you use paint would be smart because it's such a small piece of paper, my brush is kind of kicking it around a little bit. I'm not planning things as I go, and this would be a really great exercise if you're trying to learn how to use acrylic paint or just practice different textures and color schemes. So you could do a set of these, you could even tape off a page in a sketchbook, and you can practice what does it look like if I use different brush strokes, different textures, if I overlap. If you're really interested in color, you should look at Mark Rothko's color field paintings. It's all just color and interaction. So enjoy the process and keep in mind, if you mix every color on your palette together, it's gonna make brown. Brown's not a bad color, it's not wrong. Just be mindful, every color mixed together, that's what happens. If that's what you're going for, great. If not, don't be surprised. I'm not gonna wait for this to dry. I'm gonna paint directly on top without sketching with my pencil. And I'm just gonna make a heart. This is a fun painting. It's not something I'm taking too seriously. And so I'm gonna use purple since I have it on my palette. And I think it will go nicely with my cool colors and gray in the background. I'm painting slow and smaller than I intend because with my paintbrush, my art tends to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because if I'm not happy with my lines in the first place, I tend to just make them larger until it kind of gets out of control. If you hate hearts, you hate Valentine's Day, don't paint a heart. I can guarantee you my students would be asking me right now, hey, can I paint an Among Us character? If that's what you want to do, fine. I'm doing a heart because most students in my class feel not intimidated by that shape. 
So if you're at home, if you're at school, wherever you are learning to paint, pick something that makes you happy, pick something simple, challenge yourself. I have students making mini cactus paintings right now after they finish their still life, so you could paint on top of that. Um, paint a skull and crossbones, it's totally up to you. But since I'm painting a Valentine to send to someone, I'm focusing on the very cliche, recognizable symbol of a heart. And I'm just kind of having fun. I'm not using my pencil. I'm not planning things out too much. And you'll notice I'm using a different paintbrush. The flat brush is good. Um, I like it for large areas. But for more detail work, I like this round brush with the point. And it is a smaller brush. So I didn't wait for things to dry because I want the heart to really interact with the texture and colors of the background. Your colors are going to mix on the paper. That's fine with me. If that bothers you, you can always let this dry and paint on top of it. But I love how the colors interact and I think it creates such unity and harmony when the background and the foreground relate to each other. They're not separate things, they're part of the same work of art. So why not have your colors kind of smooshed together and have echoes of foreground and background? I'm liking my color scheme right now. Right now it's very cool, very gray, and I'm wondering if I can find a red somewhere. So I'm looking around and I'm actually gonna borrow another palette from one of my students' shelves. So sorry, Eric, I'm gonna borrow your palette right now because I feel like this red will really pop and contrast against all of my uh, cool colors. So wow, that really stands out. You could keep things simple and just paint with one color. You could fill it all the way in, but I love that gray kind of shining through. And this contrast of red, I mean, it is a heart, right? You think red, I think just looks really nice. So Eric, please forgive me. I just need to borrow your paint for just a second. Um, and I'm just kind of filling in, um, not the whole thing, but just adding some lines. And you could go crazy. You could have lines that filled up the whole background. Um, I'm not planning it as I go. I'm just trying to enjoy the process, not take things too seriously, and just enjoy mixing my colors. So Eric here has a really nice yellow green that keeps catching my eye in the center of the palette. So I'm gonna borrow a little bit of that because I think it's gonna really pop and just add just a few little strokes there we go, of that gorgeous yellow green. That's really nice. I love how it interacts with the gray. It's very different from the red, and I don't wanna overdo it, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. One thing I know about myself is my handwriting's fine, but when I try and paint lettering, I do a terrible job. So I'm gonna keep this completely visual, no words, and just leave it at this. As an artist, knowing when to stop, for me, is very difficult. If you ever figure out that trick, please let me know. So I'm enjoying this. Whenever I feel like I'm done, I'm gonna say I'm finished. And I think I have just the right balance of colors and lines. Okay, there she is. I'm gonna take the tape off carefully. And that is my finished mini Valentine with leftover paint. Here are some student examples at the intermediate level. I love how their personalities show through and how such a simple activity can have such a variety of results. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more painting tutorials, check these out. Also check out my website, thatartteacher.com for full length lesson plans. And if you're interested in what I'm doing in the classroom, check out my Instagram account, thatartteacher underscore machado.